Excuse me, do you know where the engineering lab is? Absolutely, right this way. Are you new here? Yes, I'm Sarah Gladstone. I'm here to inspect the company's new engine design. Nice to meet you. I'm Bob Sanders. I'm designing the vehicle that the engine is going into. I see. How's it going? Pretty well, but we're still working on some of the physics. Well, some projects take longer than others. Exactly. Here's the engineering lab. Good luck with your first day. Keystone Architecture, this is Donna. Hi, Donna. It's Jim North. I'm calling about the designs that you sent me. Is there a problem? Well, I'm wondering, why do we need the vaults on the ceilings? Oh, vaulted ceilings create more space. So they make rooms look bigger? Yes, exactly. The only downside is that they can increase energy costs. In that case, I'd rather go with flat ceilings so we're not wasting energy. The estimate for the new office building looks a little high. Yeah, but our budget might not cover it. Maybe we can make it cheaper. Let's look at some alternative materials. OK, what materials are you thinking about changing? Well, the estimate included porcelain tiles. What's wrong with that? Porcelain tiles look great. But they're also really expensive. We could save money by getting ceramic tiles instead. That's a good idea. Hello, Mom. Can I help you find anything? Yes, I'm looking for a soldering iron. OK. We have a few different models. Can I ask what you'll be using it for? I need to repair some wiring. Well, we have the Lanford 250 or the Hildale 400. OK. What's the difference? The Lanford 250 is for basic wiring. The Hildale 400 is more for small circuits. I think I'll take the Lanford. I heard you're working on the new seatbelt designs. Yes, I am. I think I can make them safer than our current models. Really? How can you do that? All I have to do is extend the stopping distance. How? Are you going to make the seatbelt stretch more? Yes, exactly. That way, the passenger's kinetic energy will be transferred to the belt. That's a pretty good idea. Yeah, I think it is. We're testing it next week. Hi, Paula. Did you have a question? Yes. Did you say that people use simple machines every day? Yes, we all use them. Um, besides the wheels on my bike, I can't think of any. Well, think about elevators. They use pulleys to raise and lower the car. Good point. I never thought of that. And we have an inclined plane right outside this classroom. Oh, yeah, the wheelchair ramp. Kevin, could you take a look at these numbers? Sure. Is there a problem? Yes. I've checked the calculations twice, but something is off. OK, let's see. Um, right here, you multiplied by 10 to the 8th power. Ah, yes, I did. Is that wrong? Well, look at the formula. That's the wrong exponent. You need to multiply by 10 to the 9th power. Oh, I see. You're right. Thank you. I don't know how I missed that. No problem. Hopefully that fixes it. Hello, Timothy. We need to talk about the measurements you're using. OK. What's up? Well, you're using imperial measurements instead of metric measurements. Oh, no. I can't believe I made such a simple mistake. It's OK. There's plenty of time to fix it. All right. So that means we need much longer pipes, right? That's it. We need pipes that are 4.5 metres, not 4 feet 5 inches. I see. Sorry about all this. I almost never work with a metric system. Hi, Ms Smith. Did you get a chance to review my project proposal? Uh, yes. You want to study how different materials dissipate heat, right? Yes, it could really help us design better computer cases. The problem and hypothesis are clear, but I have a suggestion. Sure, what is it? How about adding other materials as variables? Maybe foam and rubber? Um, we know that rubber retains a lot of heat. Good point, but try to think of some other materials to test. James, can I talk to you about the accident today? 
The fire. Yes, of course. So, what exactly happened? Well, Charles was using the blowtorch. Was he wearing gloves and goggles? He was, but his hand slipped and something on the table started burning. He was trying to put it out when his shirt caught on fire. Okay, and then he called for help. Right, I got a fire extinguisher and put out the fire. So, where are you working now? I'm a civil engineer with Design Co. I see. What types of projects do you do there? Mostly residential infrastructure. Okay. What are you working on right now? Well, right now I'm working on a new housing development. Great. We work on those fairly often. Why do you want to leave your company? I'd like to do some municipal design projects, but Design Co doesn't do them. So, what do you think about the risks of biodiesel? What do you mean? Many critics say that biodiesel will cause a food shortage. I disagree. There are enough crops in the world to supply both food and fuel. But as the population grows, demand for both will increase. That's why we're starting to make biodiesel from non-food crops. Really? What crops are you using? Well, we've had a lot of success making biodiesel from algae. Sharp and Company, how can I help you? Hi. I need a custom pressure vessel for a gas line. Hmm. We can build a physical prototype, or we can work with a computer model. Hmm. What would you recommend? Well, computer models are faster, and they let us perform a lot of simulations. But you also test physical prototypes, right? Yes, but obviously you can do a lot more with a computer model. Okay, let's talk about that. Valerie, can I talk to you for a moment? Of course, Mr. Smith. What's up? We're changing the deadlines on the GR-7 and GR-2.2 DVD player projects. Really? Aren't we trying to finish both at the same time? The GR-7 models are due next month, so we're pushing back the GR-2.2s. Okay, I'll stop production on all GR-2.2 components. No, don't do that. The same circuit card assemblies work in both products. Oh, that's right. We just need to hold off on GR-2.2 power supplies then. Tomorrow's tech. Can I help you? Hi. I'm calling about the spacecraft challenge. Okay. Would you like to register a design team? I think so. But I have a few questions first. The design can use any type of propellant, right? Yes, that's right. And it has to reach a minimum velocity of Mach three point five. No, it only has to reach two point five. Oh, I see. That makes it easier. I can't believe we're still having trouble with this crane design. I know. I was thinking about the problem last night, so I dug up my old college textbook for inspiration. And you found something useful. Yeah, I did actually. Do you remember what a trebuchet is? Sure, it's a catapult. That's right, and it uses the mechanical advantage of leverage. Okay, but how does that help us? We could do the same thing, just shorten the arm holding the counterweight. Yeah, and if we make the arm closer to the pivot, it would be stronger support that could handle more weight. Exactly. Don't you think that solves the problem? Absolutely. You should bring that textbook into work. That might not be a bad idea. So, tell me about yourself and what you can bring to Miracle Co. First of all, I have a degree in electrical engineering. I read that on your resume. Tell me what I can't read about. Well, anyone can get a degree, but not everyone has curiosity. And you do? I think so. Ever since I was a kid, I have always looked for answers. Can you give me an example? Sure. When I was ten. I took a television apart just to see how it works. Excellent. Now, how would you rate your interpersonal skills? I'm very good with people. I ran several clubs in college. Oh, could you elaborate on that, please? I'd run the meetings with members and coordinate our activities. Good morning, Samantha. How did things go yesterday? Great! The seminar on organizing systems was fascinating. I'm glad to hear it. What are you planning on going to today? 
Actually, I don't have a choice. It has to be ethics. Why is that? Well, unlike you, I only have a bachelor's degree. Ah, yes. I noticed a few of the events require postgraduate degrees. Yeah. So, which events do you want to attend today? I'd really like to get into complex systems analysis too, but I can't. Really? I thought you could go to anything with a PhD. It's not that actually. I didn't attend complex systems analysis one yesterday. Oh, I see. Now you know how I feel. Janet, what did you think of my practice presentation? I thought it was pretty good, Jiangmin. You stated your objective of optimizing mobile robots very clearly. Was my discussion of the robots' design phase confusing? No, the general to specific organization made it easy to follow. Great. Do you have any advice to help me improve? Maybe you can work on your delivery a little. What exactly should I change? Just be aware of your body language. You were moving around a lot and looking down at your cue cards too much. I didn't realize that. Did that look bad? Well, it made you look nervous and not very confident. Okay, I'll work on that. Thanks for your input. No problem. Good luck with the talk. Hey, Charlene, where are you with the window problem? Well, we just finished the third iteration of the process using two thicker panes. How did that go? The window retained enough heat and wasn't too fragile. What about the cost issue? Manufacturing two panes for one window will be expensive. How are you going to attack that problem? We have two choices. We could try another iteration with one pane. But we know that's too expensive. What's the other choice? We can look for cheaper glass. I don't know. Cheap glass breaks easily. True. We'd have to test its strength. The city challenge entries are so creative. Much better than last year. I haven't seen them yet. Which ones impress you the most? Well, one of them solves the problem of a city office building overheating. How did the engineer do it? By simply displacing warm interior air with cooler exterior air. Interesting. By adding more air conditioning capacity? Not at all. She installed an inexpensive heat pump. Not a bad idea, but it's not terribly innovative. Any others? Yes. There's another entry from an engineer who solves the problem of icy sidewalks. Sounds interesting. What did that person do? He installs pipes under the sidewalks. Hot water passes through the pipes and melts the ice. Hmm. Nice. It might take too much energy to heat the water, though. No. He uses solar panels to produce electricity. This electricity is then used to heat the water. Hi, Ted. Have you finished making the monthly report yet? Almost. I just have to finish the last graph. But I'm just not sure which type I should use. Well, what do you need to show? I mean, what will the numbers represent? I need to show how cost of materials has gone up this year. Easy enough. A scatter plot graph is out of the question, of course. Right. I was considering either a line graph or a bar graph. There are other graphs in the report, aren't there? What are they? Um. So far, I've just used line graphs. There are at least four of them already. In that case, I'd use a bar graph for sure. I think I see your point. You're saying that I need more diversity. Exactly. The whole point is to add visual interest. I'd add some color too. Great idea. I'll be sure to spice it up with some eye-catching colors. Dave, we have a problem. Do you have a minute? Sure thing. Is it about the cell phone CAD drawings? Yeah, actually, your note didn't include the dimensions. Sorry about that. So the phone has a length of six inches and a width of two inches. What about the depth? That's going to be half an inch. Half an inch. Is there enough room for the battery? Yeah, we're using the L20 battery. It's not even a quarter of an inch thick. What about the screen? We want a two by one point five inch screen. So can you get this done by tomorrow? Will do. I'll bring it over as soon as I'm finished. Thanks a lot. Hi Beth, I'm calling regarding the building materials for the new park swing set. Okay, what can I do for you? I need advice on materials for the framework. I want to use natural materials. Well, 
your two main options are wood and steel. Which do you recommend? Steel's ductility makes it a great choice, and it's not brittle, so it won't break from frequent use. Is it more expensive than wood? Yes, it does cost more. Is that an issue? Somewhat. I'm on a tight budget. Well, wood is cheaper, but it absorbs moisture over time. This reduces its hardness. So is steel better value? Yes, at least in the long term. It's very durable and requires less maintenance than wood. George, did you get the email that I sent out to the staff? I did. Why do you ask? Well, it was actually your calculation that I was talking about. Mine? I'm so sorry. I never make mistakes like that. What exactly did I do wrong? When you requested a part for the machine you're designing, you were one order of magnitude off. Oh, I thought I put down 0.5 centimeters. As I said in the email, you forgot the leading zero and the decimal. So I wrote five centimeters instead. That's exactly right, George. That's a pretty big mistake, isn't it? What happens now? Just don't forget the conventions that we use, and you'll be fine. All right. Well, again, I'm really sorry about all this. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. So, can you tell me a little bit about your company's needs? We sell a fairly wide range of MP3 players, and one of our older products needs to be updated. I see. And you're looking to modify the firmware on that item, correct? That's right. We don't make our own data retrieval system. Well, our engineers are more than capable of assisting you with that. Okay. So, what can you offer that your competitors can't? Our new data retrieval system is faster than anything on the market. Really? That sounds interesting. Anything else? Of course. I can help your marketing team convey that idea of speed in your advertisements. Excellent. Let's hear how it works. This is Plantco. My name is May. How can I help you? Hi, May. I'm having trouble with my crops. Okay. I can help you with that. What kind of plant are you growing? Right now, I'm growing tomato plants. Okay. In that case, I recommend a localized irrigation system. I don't know. I hear that can get a bit expensive. It's actually a worthwhile investment with a cash crop like tomatoes. I'm still not sure. Are there any other options? Pivot irrigation is also an option. It sprays water around in a circular motion. I don't think that's a good idea. Tomatoes are sensitive to flooding and soggy soil. Yes, that can happen with pivot irrigation. But if you use our drainage services, we can get rid of the excess. Okay, I'll think about it then. Sally, do you have a minute? I'd like to discuss your operations report. Sure. What's on your mind? It's about our productivity. Do you think we can raise it easily? Definitely. One by improving the workstation ergonomics, and two by modifying the assembly line. The first option seems less expensive, doesn't it? Yes, and it's fairly easy. One quick fix is to raise a conveyor. What exactly will that do? It will help reduce strain on your workers. Some of them complained about back pain. Well, how high do you suggest raising it? Not much. Even a few inches will help. And you really think this will increase our productivity? Yes. It would enhance a worker's efficiency and speed up their pace on the assembly line. Good morning, Martin. How is the Image Suite project going? It's going well, Ms. Donald. It's a very powerful program. What phase are you in? We're currently testing the program. So you're verifying the software's functionality. Yes, the software is conforming to the operational specifications of its design very well. Good news. So, what are the specific functions you are testing? Right now, we're just testing all the different brushes and tools to make sure they work correctly. And things are going well. No unexpected hiccups. None so far. Next up, we're going to verify that images can be stored and retrieved in different formats. What are you looking for? We need to see how it saves images in different file formats to ensure the image can be consistently reproduced in any layout. Would you mind telling us more about the differences between golden rice and normal rice? Well, the difference basically lies within their DNA. I see. And you manipulate that, correct? Yes. 
we transfer the beta carotene gene into the common rice that we're modifying. How do you do that? We use vectors to transform the cells of common rice. The result is golden rice. Aren't you worried about the fact that it's a GMO? I actually think GMOs are quite safe. Not a lot of testing is done on them, though. No, but we know for sure that people desperately need vitamin A. That's true. Do you think golden rice will lead to more GMOs? I hope so. GMOs could solve many problems. Hey, Tammy. Did you see Gary's email? Yes, I have it right here. What do you think of the advice about focusing on the basic principles of motion? I think it'll help, especially if we focus on Newton's third law. How will that help us? Well, we need a net force backwards to create an equal force forward, right? Yes, but our calculations show that we need too much fuel to create that force. Well, let's think about that. We have to counteract the mass of the rocket. Yes, and the air friction that occurs too. That's right. So the force must equal the rocket's mass plus air friction. Correct, but creating that force requires too much fuel. Wait a second. I think we made a mistake. What do you mean? Our calculations assume that air friction is present throughout the trip, but that's not correct. You're right. There will be no air friction in space. Exactly. We don't need so much fuel after all. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me again, Dr. Carmichael's. My pleasure. Why don't we start off with the questions that readers sent in to me? Yes, let's do that. The first reader wants to know more about why reaching absolute zero is impossible. Well, reaching absolute zero can't be done because a system that is at absolute zero would have to be removed from the universe. Why is that? Systems always seek equilibrium, so heat will always transfer between systems. A system at absolute zero would receive heat from neighboring systems. Interesting. Okay, here's another. Why is it important to study absolute zero? It helps us understand deep space. How's that? The temperature of space is a constant 2.73 degrees Kelvin, which is pretty close to absolute zero. I see. So, by recreating this temperature, we can understand how things such as expanding gases behave in such extreme cold. So, have you reached 2.73 degrees Kelvin? Actually, yes. We've even reached one degree Kelvin, which is the coldest natural temperature ever recorded. We still like to see how close to absolute zero we can get, though. Thanks for meeting with me today, Marsha. No problem, Chief. It's my pleasure. So, what did you find out? Well, your firefighters say that the flow of water from their fire hoses is too weak. Correct? That's right. I see. Well. I think we found a solution. What's that? The water viscosity is obviously the same across the entire city, so that's not the issue. Okay, that makes sense. Instead, we believe the diameter of your hoses is too big for the amount of pressure you're getting at the inlet. I see. So we need smaller hoses. Correct. If the driving force behind the water entering the hose stays the same, a smaller hose would increase the flow at the outlet. I'm not sure that'll work. It would probably be too expensive. Well, then you've only got one other option, and that's to replace all of the inlets you're using. That would cost more than replacing the hoses. Are you sure that using a smaller diameter fire hose will solve the problem? Absolutely. Hey, John, I got your email about the structural testing system. Yeah. What do you think about it? I like the sound of it, and I definitely think it will make things faster. That's great. Are you approving it then? I am, but I have one concern. Which is? I think we should do regular statics testing too. Doesn't that defeat the purpose of getting a new system? I'm just not comfortable switching to a different one yet. So, you want to compare the effectiveness of the device with traditional testing? Exactly. If it's just as accurate as regular tests, then we'll switch to it in the future. But won't that take even more time? Yes, but in the long run, it will be worth it. Okay, I can appreciate that. How soon can you have the device? I'll pick it up later today. Hey, I heard you're working on the exploding batteries problem. Yeah, I am. Are you working on it too? I just got assigned to it a few days ago. 
We really need to figure out what's going on. I know. The press is all over us on this one. Yeah, this is really damaging Morioka's reputation. So, what do you think the problem is? Actually, I think those consumer safety group people probably have it right. I do too. I don't think it's the separator sheet, though. Why is that? Well, the batteries I've inspected didn't have punctured sheets. That means the electrodes couldn't touch. The one I saw didn't have a punctured separator sheet either. So, you think it's the switch then? Probably. The switch must have failed to open the vent hole and release the pressure. That would definitely cause it to explode. Right. Do you have any uninspected batteries we could look at to back this idea up? I do. They're right over here. Miss Platt, thanks for taking the time to meet with me. My pleasure. So, what's this great new product you mentioned on the phone? It's a super reflective material. Its luminance is very high. And what exactly is it designed for? It would work great for safety workers. Small strips placed on uniforms can reflect large amounts of light. And how much does it cost? Well, the production process is rather involved, so it costs about $70 per square meter. That's a bit pricey. Other reflective materials are available for less. But ours reflects twice as much light as others, so you use less of it. Good point. It sounds promising. Would you be interested in purchasing some when it's ready? Well, I'm worried about more than just costs. Safety workers can't do their jobs in heavy clothes. We thought of that too. This material is extremely lightweight. That's great. How much does it weigh? It's about 95 grams per square meter. Well, I'm definitely interested. Let me know when you begin production. Helen, thanks for the email update earlier. How's the project going now? It's going well. We're just about done with the travel mug. What did you decide on? Handle or grips? We liked the look of the handle, but decided that it took up less space with grips. What's the benefit of less space? Well, companies can ship more and stores can stock more of them on their shelves. That makes sense. And the heat retention is all figured out? Yes. The interior is metal and the outside rubber grip insulates it. It doesn't get too hot because of the metal. The cup gets warm, but not unbearably hot. Why didn't the plastic version work? The plastic got very hot, so it would have needed a handle. It seems pretty involved. It won't cost a lot, will it? Not at all. Part of the goal was making it affordable. All right. Sounds like it's ready to move forward to the client. I'll prepare the final product for presentation. Good morning, Hilary. Good morning. Thank you so much for meeting with me. My pleasure. Let's dive right in. Tell me about some of your modelling experience. Well, as you can see from my resume, I've actually done quite a bit of that. Indeed. Tell me about your time with the District of Columbia. All right. That was my first job out of college, so it gave me a great chance to get some experience. Which types of modelling did you do? Well, I created qualitative models of driver behaviour. Hmm, interesting. What did you learn from that experience? We had great empirical information, but it didn't quite come together like I'd hoped. People's behaviour can be difficult to model. I see. Tell me about your current position. All right. Right now I'm doing a lot of 3D modelling using VRML. What types of things are you modelling? I'm actually creating models and simulations of traffic patterns. How's that been going? It's been great, actually. My mathematical models have been able to accurately predict traffic behaviour. Hello, Mr Sherman. I'd like to get some clarifications on that report about a steady state. Of course, Miss Howe. How can I help? First of all, you suggested moving the plant. Is that really the best option? Yes, assuming that it's otherwise impossible to reduce a path quantity like shipping distance. I see. To be honest, I can't move the plant or reduce shipping distance. Well, there could be another way to cut down on consumption. Really? I'd love to hear it. I noticed this just before you called. It's the equipment. The equipment? What do you mean? It turns out that about 500 of the units were damaged by factory equipment. Oh, no! Why so many? It turns out that this factory's equipment is actually rather outdated. 
So you recommend that I update the machines there? That should decrease the number of units damaged at the factory. It sounds like it could get expensive. True, but you'll save money overall since you won't lose so many units. Hi, Ms. Roberts. I received your proposal today. Great. What are your thoughts? We're interested in your services, but we have some questions. Sure. What would you like to know? First, how exactly do you plan to collect the raw data for the sample? Well, we have a couple of options. We could use road tubes or video detection devices. What are the benefits of road tubes? They're pretty inexpensive, but they're not always reliable. A heavy vehicle could damage the tube. What about the video detection devices? They can record all kinds of information, but they're much more expensive. Well, do you think the road tubes would be sufficient? Yes, I think they would work just fine to study this population. Okay, let's use them. And I have one more question. Sure. What is it? What kind of results would indicate that we need a new road? Well, we expect the results to reveal heavy traffic from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. If the actual range exceeds certain limits. We would recommend expanding the road. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Dr. Boyle. My pleasure. Why are you expanding the Department of Engineering? Well, our department has been smaller than those of comparable universities for decades. So you think this expansion will help the university? Yes, I believe it will bring higher quality students to Burlington. Why? We'll be giving them more opportunities to excel in computer engineering. Tell me about some of those new opportunities. Sure, we're going to be offering master's degrees in three key new areas, including fault-tolerant computer system design. Why have you identified that as a key area? Advanced space travel will require advances in computer engineering. For a spacecraft to be reliable enough for long-distance travel, it would need fault-tolerant computer systems. Interesting. What about some of the new bachelor's degrees? Those are also very exciting. Personally, I find artificial intelligence to be the most attractive. We're going to focus initially on reasoning and problem solving. Machines capable of these things would be very valuable. First of all, thank you for applying for the plastics engineer position. Thank you for interviewing me. Let's start off with your experience. So, you majored in chemical engineering in college. That's right, but I focused on polymers and plastics. And your first job was at a factory. Well, I interned for a while in college and learned the ropes before I got a real job. So you know the processes, but we want more than that. How good are you with innovation? Oh, research and development is actually one of my passions. Is that so? Tell me about it. One of my first projects when I officially started working was trying to create more lightweight polymers. Okay, let's say we give you a raw material. What's the first thing you think of? I think, how can I make something new and useful out of this? And you've been working R and D for how long? Six years next month. And you'd be interested in doing the same for our company? Yes, I would. I love the challenge. Emily, did you see this report about the sewage treatment facility? Yes, I just read it. What do you think of the mitigation measures? Well, many facilities are switching to alternative treatment methods, like the use of ultraviolet light for detoxification. Do you think that would work for the Hudson plant? It could, but I don't think it's the best option. Why not? The lamps require lots of maintenance. And you have to replace them frequently. So it's fairly expensive. Yes, both the installation and maintenance would cost a lot. How about the special storage tanks? They're a better option. They have double walls to catch spills, but a major leak can still pose a serious pollution problem. Is there any way to address that issue? Actually, there are leak detection centers you can purchase. They alert you to any ruptures in the tanks and pipes. So, would those combined with the special tanks be the best solution? I think so. Installing leak sensors on the tanks would probably limit sewage runoff significantly. Have you read the new Energy Tomorrow article on reprocessing nuclear fuel rods? Yeah, I have. I didn't really like it, though. Why's that? Well, I think it's pretty biased. 
I don't think reprocessing fuel rods is a good idea. I think it's a great idea. Why don't you like it? For one thing, it's dangerous. Plutonium from spent fuel rods can be used to make nuclear weapons. I suppose, but I'm sure they would be careful to secure the rods. Mm, that may be, but I also disagree with it because of the expense. The expense? Yeah, just going out and finding uranium two three five in the ground is not cheap. That may be, but reprocessing fuel rods is a much more efficient way of getting new nuclear fuel. How do you figure that? It's simple. Those breeder reactors create more plutonium than they use up. I suppose that's true. Besides, think about the environmental benefit of reprocessing the waste instead of burying it. Burying radioactive fuel rods is very harmful. You're definitely right about that. I'm still not convinced, though. Hello, this is Frank Jansen at Biocare. I'm returning a call for Dr. Ellen Baker. Hi, Frank. This is Ellen. Thanks for calling me back. My pleasure. What can I do for you? I have a few questions about that new CT scanner you've developed. Yes, the Biocare 2000. What can I tell you? Well, I see that it offers 256 slices. Is that really possible? It is. We're the only manufacturer that offers such a high number. I know. The most I've ever seen is a 64 slice scanner. And that's not bad. But with 256 slices, you'll get a clearer picture than ever before. I would imagine so. But with so many slices, aren't we putting patients at risk? Are you talking about the radiation? Exactly. More slices must mean more X-rays, right? Actually, it's just the opposite. With our improvements, the new unit uses fewer X-rays than a 64 slice scanner. That's fantastic. What about speed? It can take a little longer for larger scans. That's not too bad, considering the improvements. Now let's talk about price. 